Hi all. Uh, so welcome back. So we let's start with some hands-on exercises for understanding the tokenized tokenizers package in Hacking Phase, right? So first we'll start with the data set. We'll have to load some data set and then build the vocabulary, tokenize sentences from that data set and so on, right? So we'll start with this. Now there are some cells here which are a bit expensive to run in the sense they take a few minutes. So I've just run them in advance uh, and I'll just use the outputs as it is, right? Uh, uh, some which are easy to run, I'll just run it for the sake of it, okay. Uh, so we'll take the book corpus and we want to train a tokenizer. Uh, it may take some while to download, right, and it also requires some memory. So be careful that you have sufficient memory available. I've, of course, downloaded it beforehand and it contains a total of 74 million sentences of varying lengths, right. All sentences, of course, are of not the same length, but this does not affect the training of a tokenizer, right. Now we'll just start by looking at a few samples. Again, this is a cell which I have already run. You can run it when you are going over the notebook. So I'm just uh, taking the, <coughs> uh, uh, from that data set, I'm taking uh, the samples, okay? Uh, the first six samples and just printing them. And this, like, as you can see, some typical sentences that you would find in a book is what you see here, okay? Um, okay, so let's go ahead. Uh, nothing uh, groundbreaking here. So now let's start yeah, with the tokenization, right? So it, uh, if you remember in the last class, we had seen that it has a few stages. There was a normalizer, there was a pre-tokenizer, there was a post-processor, then the algorithm slash model that you use for tokenization, BP, word piece, and so on, right? Uh, yeah, this is what the pipeline looked like. So let's try to build this pipeline, okay? Uh, and what we'll do is we'll make some very simple choices, right? So we'll just say that the normalizer is just lowercase, uh, the pre-tokenizer is just like white spaces. Uh, the model is BP, we could choose anything here and we'll not do any post-processing now. Uh, we may include something later on, okay? Uh, so again, I'm going to import these packages, uh, nothing great here, yeah. And uh, I'm going to create a tokenizer and I'm going to say that the model that I want to use is BP and it should output the symbol UNK in square brackets for any unknown token, right? And what are unknown tokens? Why would you experience uh, or why would you encounter unknown tokens is something that we'll see through examples. Uh, that will come later, but I need to initialize it now so that I can use it later on, right? So just think of it that suppose it sees a token which it has never seen before in the corpus, then for that token, it will just output UNK, right? That's all I'm saying here. And you're building a tokenizer. Uh, now we'll add the normalizer and the pre-tokenizer. I have already run these cells before, so I'm not running them again. Uh, so the normalizer is lowercase, pre-tokenizer is white space, as we said. Um, now we want to create the trainer for BP, right? So we'll create the trainer. So we'll import the BP trainer uh, from the tokenizer trainers, okay? And we'll say that we want the vocab size to be 32,000. There are a couple of special tokens that we want, which is the pad and the unknown token. Uh, padding, why do we need a pad token? Again, we'll see it later on. And when we are splitting words, uh, suppose running gets split as run plus ing, R-U-N-N plus I-N-G, uh, then we want hash hash to indicate, uh, before I-N-G to indicate that it's a part of the previous word originally, right? So uh, okay, nothing uh, which is difficult to understand here. There's a trainer, we want to train the vocabulary, right? We want to apply the BP process of merging these uh, byte pairs, right? And the final vocabulary that we are aiming for is 32,000. So we want to do approximately 32,000 merges and uh, just saying how you should display the continued tokens, right? So that's all we are saying here, okay? Um, okay, let's go ahead. Uh, now the pipeline is ready, right? So uh, we have created the series of steps you want to do. We have specified the uh, normalizer, we have specified the pre-tokenizer, we have specified the model that we want to use which is BPE. For that model, we have also created a trainer with some specifications of the vocabulary size, the uh, spatial tokens and all of that, right? And now we want to pass these uh, 74 million samples through it. And because it will be expensive to sort of load all of this at once, we are going to create like a batch processing where we'll use this yield function available in Python which will just uh, iteratively keep processing the uh, data, right? Um, so what all we are doing is that I'm saying that the batch size is 1000 or whatever parameter I pass 
and I'm just going to keep extracting thousand samples from the data set. Okay. Now we are ready to train the tokenizer. So this is what it looks like, right? So I have the tokenizer. Uh, okay, this is going to be multiprocessor. So I have some number of CPUs. Yeah. So now I had created a tokenizer. Okay. Uh, let me just go back. So I had created the tokenizer object, which was a BPE tokenizer, and I had initialized some parameters. I'd also created a trainer. So let's see now how I'm using the trainer uh, in the in the actual training process. Right? Yeah, so uh, I'm going to say tokenizer train from iterator, right? So I'm going to get uh, some samples at a time, okay? This is the data set being passed, right? And I'm not passing the entire 5GB of data. I'm just extracting 10,000 samples at a time. I specified the trainer is the BP trainer that I had created. Uh, and the length is the length of the data set, right? So that's all I have specified. And I'm not going to run this cell. It takes a few minutes to run it, but I've already done it before. So I have the tokenizer uh, trained with me, right? So you can see that it took about five minutes to train. So I don't want to do that on live now, but you can execute that cell and you'll have to wait for a while. Again, it takes a bit of memory. So make sure that you have memory, right? Uh, okay, so now let's look at what it has created, right? So this is the uh, model which got created and I'm going to save the model, right? So where did this uh, model come from? So this was the tokenizer. And I'm just saying that whatever model you have created, save it and save it uh, uh, in a specific uh, format, right? Uh, is what I'm saying with a particular prefix. So the prefix is hopper and I'm saying the vocabulary as well as the merges that I had done, right? So remember in BP we do merges. So that's also being saved, okay? Now let's look at some of these outputs, okay? so. Uh, let me see if I want to run this. Okay, I don't have a choice. I'll have to run it. Okay, so the tokenizer has been trained and we have saved it. Now let's see what do these sub tokens uh, look like, right? So yeah, I'm just going over the merges. So you can see that the top 10 lines is what I'm going over, right? So H and E is what it merged first, then T and H E to get the I and N to get in. All of these look like reasonable things to do, right? ER is a frequently occurring suffix, so it has got merged. ED is again a frequently occurring suffix, so it has got merged, right? Uh, now let's look at the last N merges, right? So towards the beginning, of course, the smaller uh, character, I mean, uh, single characters or character biograms are getting merged, right? That is what is happening initially. But what happens towards the end, right? When we have done all these small, small merges and started creating larger subwords, so what is happening when we are at the end of this process? So you can see now that black got merged with R to give you blacker as a token, add got merged with jet to get you adject and so on. Right? So you see that now larger subwords are getting merged to form even larger uh, subwords or some of these are actually words also, right? So, so that's what's happening in the uh, training. So that's how it has created the vocabulary. Uh, now let's look at the vocabulary, okay? Uh, so let's view the number of merges it has done. So that's just the total number of lines that you would have here. So let's just execute this. So it's 31,000 merges. So remember you had asked it to create a vocabulary of size 32,000 and it has done 31,871 merges. The reason for that is that the single characters etc. don't get counted. Right? So the vocabulary size is 32,000. right? And the merges is slightly less because you don't count the single characters such as letters, numbers, and spatial symbols, right? So those, those would be the other characters which then sum up to give you a vocabulary of size 32,000, okay? Uh, yeah, so let's look at the vocabulary now. So let me execute this. Yeah, so we'll sort it and then print it, right? So I've just, I, I probably went over a bit fast. Yeah, so I've just sorted the vocabulary, right? Uh, and uh, by, by token IDs. And now I'm going to, so I've just sorted the vocabulary by token IDs. And now I just want to show you something in an interactive mode. So I'll have to go back uh, to the um, non-presentation mode. So I'll just close this. Uh, yeah, so here's the vocabulary. Now let me just run this cell. Okay, so you have an interactor. So the first token to be merged, pair of tokens to be merged, right? or, or the first pair to be merged was H and E, which gave you the token He, right? And now what I'll do is I'll keep moving from here. 
the next thing was not next but at some point s and c got merged uh, to give you score and so on it so you can see that initially all these smaller subwords are getting merged now as you move further you will see that larger and larger sub tokens are now subwords are now getting merged right and as you go to the end we had already seen what you see at the end of the list which was these words right mel got merged with anthe uh, then there was blacker and so on it's so all of this larger subwords getting merged and you can see the actual tokens that you get right so dnr got merged to give you dr uh, something got merged to say let's see id 14749 right so let's just go a bit back yeah, probably it will be hard to get a correspondence here but you understand it so some token subwords got merged here and you got the token care and at the end the last token to be added was the token melanthi this got added to your uh, vocabulary okay so i'll go back to the presentation mode for the rest of it um, yeah so this you won't be able to see in the interactive part this is just what we saw on the sliders right so that sliders don't show up here okay uh, yeah, we already told you that these are the tokens which got merged.